Good afternoon. This is Rich Nass, Executive Vice President with Open Systems Media, and I'm here for this week's installment of Five Minutes With. This week, I'm speaking to Mark Lambert, who is the Vice President of Products for Parasoft. Good afternoon, Mark. How are you? I'm great, thanks, Rich. How are things with you? Uh, well, I won't say great, but they're pretty good. But uh, okay, great. Okay, so uh, I won't even attempt to knock you down a peg. We'll, we'll leave you at great. Okay, so um, for the people who are listening, Parasoft is, is in the test of the software stage of the product design. And um, I have a question related to IoT. Now, these IoT products are being built as fast as people can build them. Um, in many cases, some people will say that they're being built too fast. So when you're, building as fa when you're moving as fast as people are, things often get skipped, neglected, overlooked. And I'm afraid that that test stage that Parasoft is actually really good at is the stage that doesn't always get its fair share of attention. Um, is that a fair assumption? Yeah, I, I think it is, Rich, because you know, what, what we've certainly seen from an industry perspective is that um, obviously IoT, meaning the, the big I there, is connectivity. Um, and while traditional um, embedded developers, the developers creating the thing, um, aren't, are really usually working in an isolated world, so they're doing unit testing, which obviously is where Parasoft kind of grew up from with our C++ and Java solutions. But what they're also now doing, doing is they've got to think about how they live in a connected world. So that ecosystem is beyond their uh, individual component, and they have to think about how do they connect to things, and how do they connect for testing purposes, how do they connect for security, um, and how do they test everything together as running as kind of a system. And that really does expose a number of different problems. Okay, so now you just brought up something interesting. They're connecting devices to devices that they may not even know what they're connecting to. So how do you mm -hmm. test? In, in an IoT environment when you're not really sure, I mean, if everybody's, if everybody's following the spec, everything should just work together. But you don't know what the other guy's doing at his end. So how do you deal with that? You know, that, that's actually, uh, yeah, the other guy at the other end should be doing the right thing, right? We all know that that doesn't yeah. actually happen should in be. reality. So, but the interesting thing here is this is the same problem that what I think of as enterprise IT organizations have been trying to solve or actually have solved over the last 15, 20 years. Um, IoT is really um, applying some of those same principles from the enterprise world of connected systems, um, uh, but providing it to devices. So really what you can do here is there's a couple of key techniques that you can leverage to improve that quality process. Um, you know, the first thing is testing through the, the API layer itself. So um, the concept of testing a RESTful service or a SOAP service in enterprise IT has been there for a long time. Um, but when you come to go into your IoT device, well, you've got, okay, your, your little device has a, a, some interface, some programmatic interface, usually some RESTful HTTP type protocol. Um, and you can talk to the device and tell it to do something. But then that device also needs to talk to something else that's out there and get some information. That's the flip side of the coin. That's where the technique of, of service virtualization comes into play. So I can actually take my complex system and I can start to test individual points within that system infrastructure using API testing. And then I can emulate the components that I don't have available to me, um, be that they're a third party or maybe they're even not developed yet. That's an often kind of the agile roadblock that often organizations run into. Or I can't make them display the characteristics that I need, uh, either functional data related or even performance characteristics. Maybe I have a local instance that runs really, really fast, but I need to somehow understand how the you know, 3G connection in a spotty network area, how that could potentially affect my application. And that's where service virtualization comes in. Service virtualization allows me to emulate those RESTful or those, or those message-based communications, um, you know, RESTful or proprietary protocols, helps me emulate them so I can isolate my system under test and really have a a true, I think of it like a, a, like a virtual test bed or a virtual test environment directly available to me 
as an individual developer or available to the, to the team as a whole to work collaboratively. Yeah, you brought up something that I find very interesting, and I'm not sure if you even meant it this way, but the whole concept of IoT, um, while it sounds great, there's a lot of the technologies aren't new technologies, and people shouldn't get scared by them. We use a lot of the same things we've been using for the last 15 years. We just have this uh, funny marketing name of IoT that we use for it now, but a lot of the technologies are, are tried and true. So people shouldn't be afraid of them. No, it's, it's just it's easier access to the technologies now. I mean, you know, if you think about how APIs have evolved over the last, I mean, really, you know, the last 15 years, um, you know, it started with SOAP-based transactions which were used in um, enterprise organizations internally, and then it's become RESTful over the last few years, and it'll change again. So kind of microservices is the latest buzzword. But all of this is the same as what we were using like 25 years ago. I remember doing work on, um, I, can't, I think it was, I can't remember the name of the, the technology, but it was, it was a remote interfacing between between two Solaris workstations. It's basically the same thing. I mean, you're just calling a service that's on a different machine. Um, it's just that now that technology is a lot more accessible, and really IoT is exploiting the ability that it's more standardized, it's more open. But that actually does actually start introducing another risk, which is security, right? Because now, because it is standardized, it's a lot easier for us to all understand it. It also means there's a lot more people that understand it and can hack it as well. Very true, very true. Uh, and that's a pretty good subject, but that will have to be a subject for another day because we have used up our five minutes. So I would like to, I'd like to thank Mark Lambert of Parasoft. He is the Vice President of, of Products there, and I'm Rich Nats with Open Systems Media. Have a great day, Mark. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate the time.